So one of the most time consuming things that we do as administrators is creating user accounts. Uh, and it's one of those things if you do it in the GUI, you really don't get any faster at it. Um, I mean, other than typing and clicking quicker, it you have to go through the process, the wizard for creating every single user. So one of the big uses of PowerShell, or a place where we really get to see the time saving elements of PowerShell, is the ability to create users from a CSV file. So what we'll do typically is we'll have HR give us a CSV file of new users. And then we'll take the information in that CSV file, we'll run it through a script that processes it and then creates new users for it. Now, the commands to do this are a little interesting. So uh, let's walk through the process. Let me start by showing you a CSV file that I've got. So I created one here and I just created it in Notepad. So I'm going to do a get child item and you're going to see a users.csv. And then I'm going to just type users.csv which will just display it for us. And you'll notice up here, and this is the format that we're going to want. Up here we have column headings separated by commas and then we have all of our records separated by commas. So the last name is going to be Cisco, Nareese, Stax, first name is going to be Benjamin, Kira, Jadzia, username. Alright, you get the idea. Now, um, depending on what we get from HR depends on how we process it. But I'm going to show you the basic process, and I'm not going to do it in a script. I'll let you figure out how to do it in a script. I'm going to do it just from command line, and we're going to do several different commands in order to make this happen. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a variable to use as my password. Now I could use something from here to create the passwords, but I'm going to create a generic password for all of them. So I'm just going to call it dollar sign pass equals convert to convert to secure string and then I'm going to give it my generic password as plain text we've seen this before and force and that will create my dollar sign pass which will be my password for uh, all of these users. And I can verify that it worked by going to dollar sign pass and I should see this system.secure or security.secure string. Okay, so that gives me my password that I'm going to use. Now the other thing is I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to put them in the same organizational unit. So again, I'm going to create a variable for that. I'm going to call it dollar sign path equals and then I'm going to get ad organizational unit and I'm going to want the one that says filter or I'm going to filter that to name is like and I'm going to put these in a DS9 organizational unit that I've already created. So if I type dollar sign path now I should see there's my organizational unit named DS9. Perfect. So now I have my users in my path or my password and my path. Now I'm going to import that CSV file and it's the import dash CSV is going to be the command that we're going to use. But I'm going to throw it into a variable. So it's going to be dollar sign users equals import C dash CSV and then I'm going to give it the path to that and since I'm just in my default path here, I'm going to import CSV to or the file name is going to be users.csv and that could be any file name that we created. Now to see what that looks like I'm going to type dollar sign users and you're going to see we have column headers last name first name username and it's structured all of my data under those columns. That's exactly what I want. Okay now I've got my variables created now I'm ready to start the process. And I want this to do a separate command for each variable or for each row here that I imported from my CSV file. So here's the command for each and then in parentheses dollar sign user in dollar sign users. So 
what we do since we created this as a plural then each one is going to show up as a singular and that's just an easy way to do it for each user in users and then I'm going to do an open curly bracket and remember anytime we have open curly bracket it's the beginning of a script block now when I'm doing this here at command line I'm going to want to do the same thing inside my script but when I'm doing it here at command line and I have an open command block it takes me down to the next line now, I could type all this on one line but you're not going to like it, I'm not going to like it, it's going to make it difficult to troubleshoot. So I'm just going to go down to the next line. Now I want to set a display name. So I'm going to create a new variable for each user, this one's going to be unique. Display equals, and I want to take their first name, and to that I want to add a space, and to that I want to add their, and I just did this wrong, it's dollar sign user dot first name so here's my user dot first name and for that I'm gonna I'm gonna add to that dollar sign user dot last name so it should be Benjamin space Cisco and Kira space Norris and Jadzia space Dax that's gonna create my display name now um, now I'm ready to run my new user applet. So it's going to be new ad user. And we're going to see if I type all this correctly or not. Uh, so the name is going to be dollar sign user dot username. So that's going to be for each user their username. Their given name is going to be dollar sign user dot first name. Their surname is going to be dollar sign user dot last name and what we're dealing with is basically it's like an array right so each record here is going to be dollar sign user dot last name dot first name dot username and if I had more things obviously I could add them in as well I could put in specific passwords or any information that I wanted to go into my user accounts uh, I'm going to set the display name is going to be dollar sign user dot nope not just going to be dollar sign display because that's not part of this user thing so I want to set the account password to dollar sign pass and then I want to set the path to dollar sign path now I have to specify one thing here variables have scope all right so basically if you create a variable inside a script it works within that script it doesn't work outside of that script so if you create and it's easier to right if you create your dollar sign pass dollar sign path inside your script once your script finishes executing them you're not going to have access to them anymore also, if you close your session and open it back up, those go away as well. So just keep that in mind when you're using these variables. Make sure that you have them in the right place. So I'm setting the path. Then I want change password at login to be true. And then I want enabled to be dollar sign true so what that'll do that'll force them to change password at log on not log in good thing I caught that and then enabled true means the account normally when you start it it defaults to enabled false and then we have to go in and we have to use the um, enable dash ad account and set the username to enable the account this will start it out enabled so that's just a convenient little thing. And then we're going to do one more command in here in our script block, and we're going to add group add ad group member. And I want to add the uh, this particular user, whichever one I'm working on, to the crew group. And I'm going to specify dollar sign user dot username. So for each user, generate their display name, create the user account, 
add them to the crew group, and then we're going to close our script block. And this is where we find out if I typoed anything. What do you know? I didn't typo anything. That is honestly kind of shocking to me. Now, I want to see if this worked. So I'm going to start by getting my AD user. And I'm going to set my filter uh, to be name like, I want everything. And then I'm also going to specify a search base. And that's going to be dollar sign path. Now, if I would have created the path variable in a script, then when I exited out of the script to do this, I wouldn't find it. Uh, I couldn't find the path variable, but you'd have to recreate it. But since I have, I created it outside of the script, then when I run it, ah, uh, shoot. Format table and just show me the names. Now I have three new users, Ben Cisco, Kira Norris, and J Jadzia Dax in my um, my organizational, my DS9 organizational unit. Did we successfully add them to the group? Well, let's do get AD group member and I want to view my crew and then once again I don't want all the information so I'm just going to format this as a table and just view the names and sure enough Jadzia Dax, Karina uh, Kara Norris and Ben Cisco have been added to my crew group. Okay, so I have just created users and then added them to a group from a CSV file. Now, when you're doing this, be forewarned, it's going to take a while when you generate your script. Let me scroll back up here to where my script was. Actually, get my command here. There we go. When you generate your script, I mean, this is pretty long and complicated. So when you generate your script, it's probably going to take you a while to get it running the way you want it to. And you can do this as a parameterized script or as an interactive script. You can do it lots of different ways. But once you get it done, then all you have to do, anytime you go to add new users, anytime you, know, you hire new people from HR, get your CSV file from HR, have them generate one from their new hire, or whatever. And then you can take that file and if they structured it the right way, uh, you might have to double check it and make sure they structure it the right way. But then you can just run your script, and if it's a parameterized script, run your script, give it that file name, and it will create the users for you automatically. Okay, um, it'll take you a while to get it set up and running right the first time, but once you do, it makes your life from that point on a whole lot easier.